My name is Katie Atuberry. Anyways, the star of the show is here. Yasmin Jameson in the house. She I, she I. <laughs> anyway, so today we're going to be talking about our African studies class. Yes. Oh, my hands are pale. Mine's are kind of dry, actually. It's because okay. it's winter time. You know. You know what? You don't know. <laughs> Anyways, we had our African studies class. We're Let's very see. excited to learn. This is the first time I've really like stayed engaged in the class. And we've... Our eyes have been really open, like, yeah, like, open, (laughs) like, spiritually open, like, open, like, I stayed awake, so yeah, but, like, still, I'm wide awake, so, in this class, I felt, like, I don't know a lot about my culture. The first question that they asked us was, what does Africa mean to us? And the first thing that I said was, Africa, even though I'm not necessarily African directly, Africa is like my identity. It's like a missing part of me that I would like to know about because being from the Caribbean, it means I'm from Africa. We were taken from Africa. As you can see in my skin tone, I'm a lot lighter, even though I'm black, which means somewhere along the lines of my family, we were colonized or maybe there's like white or other parts. And that's what I really wanted to learn. Uh, for me, what I wrote when I hear the word Africa, I hear home. I hear uh, a home that was robbed. I We were literally robbed naked out of our resources, our materials. Like we were, I b- really believe that we were the richest continent in like, you know what I mean, in the world. However, we were robbed naked. Uh, gold was taken away from us. You, you name it, it was gone. People, slavery, our cultures, people were taken away from their homes. We were put in all these different um english looking countries and we were forced to adapt to this new culture new language and so i just went off on that paper about how frustrated i was however um don't get don't get it mistaken africa is full of love beauty and all that good stuff so don't get it twisted yes this is what i want to say so i just feel sad because africa is a very like resourceful continent like we are very like our resources are like Oil, gold, diamonds, everything you can think of is from Africa, but we're exporting all of these goods and it's not benefiting the people. So Africa is one of the poorest continents in the world because we have taken our resources and we're just putting it out and then only the top dogs are corruption and government. They're the only ones who are benefiting from the from the resources and it's not going towards the people, which I think is very wrong and it's something that we need to change. Also, another thing that I noticed is a lot of us are very lost with our culture and our history. We don't know anything because our story has been rewritten so many times and we've allowed this. We're confused as to what is really happening. Like, what really did happen? We don't know because when I'm in class, um, aside from African history class, I learn about the English portion to it. So I'm hearing all the good things that happened about colonization and all that stuff, about Columbus this, Columbus that. It actually isn't until recently I heard about, like, I'm learning actually about all the negative things that are attached to Columbus. I didn't know all these things. Why? Because of the lack of education in our educational system. We're not being taught as much as we should be taught, or at least the side that we should actually know, which is the truth. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I actually, this is my first black African teacher in university so far. It's so hard to find black profs around, especially, and he's a man. So to, to find an actual female, a black female prof, I have yet to see. Essentially, like, a lot of the time in class, yes, this is an African studies class, so I feel like a very this is a topic that's very dear to me, and, like, a lot of the black students in class, like, this is our culture, like, this is, like, not to say, like, if you're white, you can't join the of African not. studies the class. The more, the merrier. But at the same time, like, you have to be conscious of the fact that you're, when you speak, you're speaking about people's history, their heritage, and these are things that lots of people have experienced. There could be people in the class who have family in the Rwanda genocide or whatever, like you never know. So when people are speaking out in our class and they say like ignorant things where they just want to put their hand up just to speak, you have to very like you have to pay attention to where you are because there are people saying, Oh, Africa is a, a beautiful country, like Africa is not a country, it is a continent. Oh, Africans are black people who are tend to be dark skinned. Pause. Africans, black people come in many different shades, many different colors. Africans are uh, illiterate. Like, no, like you need to you need to pause, you need to look around you, and you need to see like this is our people. Let me anymore. educate y'all because let me just tell y'all one thing, okay? Not everyone in Africa has the same skin color. However, we are black, okay? Okay, thanks. 
one more thing, okay? Africa is not a country. It is a continent. George okay? Bush. Thank you. Open your ears. Yeah, please. Just, <laughs> I'm going to say that one more time. Africa is not a country. It is a continent. Okay? There's a difference. Another issue. <laughs> the Middle East. Oh. <laughs> the Middle East. Is a part of Africa. Okay. The Middle East is a part of Africa. That confuses me Madagascar too. is a part of Africa. Oh, I'm from Egypt. I'm not black. You're in Africa. Eric's. Like, I don't know what when you guys decided to float off, but you were you were African. Mm-hmm. It's sad that you don't want to um, claim that part of your culture, but you are African. Yes, and lots of people in the Middle East have green eyes, blah, blah, blah. You were colonized. And I think that people should learn their history. Like, you can't, people That's say things all the time, and it's because we're lost. Yeah. So I'm, oh, I'm Middle Eastern, yep. but it's just like, you're lost. Yep. That's what I see when you say that to me. Oh, I'm not black. You're lost. Do you see your hair? Like, they have that, they have curl patterns, they have thick hair. Oh, but then don't also think that, like, because you're black, you have nappy hair. Like, that's not yeah. true. Oh, no, 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 no. There's some black girls that have some beautiful, nice, luscious curl pattern is on fleek. Just, it's just the way it is. Like, you know what I mean? Everyone comes with different curl patterns, different hair texture, different skin tone. It's, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. I'm lighter than her. My hair is kinkier than hers. So. Yeah. And if we put another, let's say another dark skin girl, I am lighter than her and she's darker than me. You know what I mean? It is, it's just, it's one of those things that we can't really change because it's natural. We just have to accept it. Um, how I can use this course by benefiting from it is learning more about my culture and history just to go back to like friends, family and the community as a whole and just relating that information to people who don't necessarily understand what is going on around them and about the history so it would just be like um, relaying information to more people and just passing that on. I personally feel like I can use this course in the future because I thought I knew a lot but I really don't and even in this first lecture, I've learned so much. Um, there's a lot of things that I need to know, that I need to like memorize, like get on that, because there's so many, like Africa is a huge, just, it's just a, a jungle. Bruh. That was wrong. No. Oh, that's very stereotypical. <laughs> that's stereotypical. But, okay. Like, Africa is just something that, like, Everyone should know about it because this is Africa is the most central continent. Everyone dispersed from Africa. So even if you're white, blonde hair, blue eyes, like you might find that you have 1% African. You're still African, like you never honey. Know, you're like, still African. And it's just, I think it's very important because when I go back to Toronto and we have our Black History Month, there are so many things now that I can talk about that I couldn't speak on before. I used to speak about slavery and blah, blah, blah. And that's another thing with Black History Month. If you're going to educate people about Black History Month, you don't just speak about slavery. Slavery is not black history. Slavery interrupted black history. It is not a part of it. There are lots of things like, what is her name? I can't pronounce her name. She, I'll Sarah put Barney? her name out. No, the, the one from the TED Talk we spoke about. She will mind that. If you, if you know the song Flawless with Beyonce. She was the one that was yeah. speaking in it. I'll put her name down below. Yeah. Um, she is talking about a single story, and that's the problem with us. We only know the single story. Once Africans more. were enslaved, they were brought to the Caribbean, Haiti, wherever, and that's it. We're poor, we have diseases, and we dance, and we can twerk. But there are other stories. Africans have philosophy. Africans have like modern medicine. Africans built pyramids. Africans did this. Africans did that. Like we're there's rich with natural exactly. resources. Exactly. There's so much to this other side that we never hear that it's it's crazy. There are books now, people. You can find books now. YouTube channels, um, blogs. Just You just have to make the effort to actually go out and find these resources. This is not like back in the days where we can say, oh, there's no more, um, there's no books, there's no information. No, now it's everywhere. We have the internet. Like We just have to make the effort to actually go out and educate ourselves without being ignorant about it. On another note, um, so Black History Month is coming in what three weeks? Yo, we should know the exact date. Like it should be February. on my calendar. It's February. I celebrate February, like yeah. it's my birthday. See, this is the thing. This is what I actually find so interesting. <laughs> Black History Month is actually dedicated to the whole entire month of February. 
back where I used to go to school. And then I come to find where other schools, in fact, they don't even, it's just a regular month for them. I find that so, like, I get so perplexed when I hear those type of things. It's like coming from different students. Oh, um, yeah, we just went on with our daily lives. Or, yeah, we dedicated a day to it or a week or poems. No, we took it very seriously. And it's sad to know that we have educational systems, people in power who are thinking that this is just an ordinary month. Uh, no, pause. Hello. No, it's not. Take it seriously. But, like, sometimes you can't even... How can we really change their minds? Well, at my school, I went to an all-white school. Yeah. So... It's up to us instead of complaining about That's it, which true. is what I used to do. Um, from grade 9 to 11, I was like, wow, Black History Month. They played Wade in the Water. People looked at me and said, yes, me, why aren't you crying? I was like, well, what do you want me to do? What, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't be angry with them because they did not know. And it was up to me. It's our responsibility. Instead yes, of complaining and sitting down saying, wow, like there's no Black History Month, start it. And that's what I did. I took time out of my day, which was like not even a lot. And I brought in Rosemary Sadler, like the the inventor of Black History Month in Canada, like all of these things. Um, and I brought the education to my school. And people were like, wow, like, wow, like people invented this. A black man invented yeah. peanut butter. Oh, my gosh. Like and they so get many things. And they yeah. get a new perspective of exactly. things. And it's like you can't blame people for not knowing if we're not going to teach yeah, them. Exactly. We just have to grow like, grow together, meaning we're going to teach each other so we grow as one. Therefore, no one is left behind and no one is really thinking negatively about our culture because now they are educated as to what we want them to know. And then we just like, yes, there will be arguments here and there. Yes, people are just um, very delusional and just some people just don't want to know. Some people don't care. And that's that's fine because everyone is entitled to what they want to know and want to be educated on, I guess. We can't really force people to learn something new. However, if we can grasp a large amount of people's uh, minds, then I think we can make a big difference. But it starts one by one. It starts with you talking to your friends about Black History Month and how you can actually grow the chain. Bye. Bye. <laughs>